In today's lesson, we're going to continue our discussion of shorthand orbital notations and electron configurations. We're going to see how these things can be predicted based on our periodic table, and then we're also going to actually look at a new property, things like unpaired electrons and valence electrons, and how they can also be predicted based on our periodic table. So just like before, anytime we're looking at orbital notations, electron configurations, and really, it doesn't matter if it's long or shorthand, we want to first go ahead and label our table. So we start over here, we move helium over, and then we start with our S rooms. So that's 1S, 2S, 3S, 4S, 5s, 6s, and 7s. We jump to the right side and start with our p, and we start 2p, 3p, 4p, 5p, 6p, and 7p. We go to the middle, and the middle starts with 3, so that's 3d, 4d, 5d, and 6d. And not that we'll be using them for this class, but we also have our 4f and our 5f on the bottom. So now we have our energy levels labeled because that's the entire row across. First energy level, second energy level, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And we also have our individual subshells labeled, 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, all the way down. We then can pick an element. So the first element that I'm gonna look at today is gonna to be down here. This is potassium. And let's focus on the shorthand versions of our orbital notations and electron configurations that we started with yesterday. If I wanna draw the shorthand orbital notation for potassium, I'm gonna start with the noble gas that comes before 19, so that would be 18, that's argon. I put argon in square brackets, I write its atomic number underneath it, and then I just need to represent the next one, which would be 4s. So I can have my orbital notation, the shorthand version, which is 4s with 1, arrow, or I could write out the electron configuration version, which is where I would take argon and add 4s with just an exponent of 1. Both of these are the shorthand versions of potassium, 19 total electrons. We can, of course, determine energy levels, which we would do just looking at the row on the periodic table it's in, or the biggest number we wrote, that's four. We can determine subshells, which would be the rooms or these individual regions, one, two, three, four, five, six, so the sixth region, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we can figure out orbitals, and remember the rule we talked about in the last lesson was we take the noble gas divided by two, so 18 divided by two is nine, and then just add in any of these lines, so that would be a total of 10. The things we're going to add in then today are valence electrons and unpaired electrons. And to count valence electrons, you really could look at either one of these representations because a valence electron is an electron that's in the outermost energy level, not necessarily subshell, but energy level. So we need to consider the principal quantum number, which here our biggest principal quantum number is four, and then we just consider any electron that is above that region. So here and here, we see that in the fourth energy level we have one electron, so that's one valence electron. For the unpaired electrons, we really should be looking at the orbital notation, an unpaired electron is any place we have an up that does not have a down beside it. So we also have one unpaired electron. So potassium, which is in group one here, has one valence electron and it's also unpaired. So that's one valence and one unpaired electron. The next example I wanna look at is over here. We're also gonna draw out sulfur. And sulfurs, going to start with neon, the noble gas before it. Neon has 10 electrons. 11 and 12 are in 3s. 11, 12. 
and 13, 14, 15, and 16 are in 3P, so that's a total of four arrows. Remember, P's always get three lines, all the up arrows get filled in first, and then the down arrow. So, energy levels. We can look for the biggest number we wrote, which would be three. Subshells. We can count on the periodic table, one, two, three, four, five. Orbitals, we use noble gas divided by two, so that's five, plus any lines, six, seven, eight, nine. And valence electrons, are these electrons that are above the biggest number. Since the biggest number here is three, we need to count all the electrons that are above a three. One, two, three, four, five, six. And unpaired electrons, those are going to be the ones that don't have a down partner. So that's our two. Even if we had drawn out the electron configuration, the shorthand version, and replace these arrows with the exponents, we still could have determined everything except the orbitals and the unpaired electrons. These two things you really should be looking at orbital notation for. Now before we go any further, I'm actually going to take a break here and I'm going to have you draw out some other examples.